Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we have Pat Slattery from Pat Slattery International, business coach, business guru, and a speaker. Welcome, Pat. <laughs> Great to be here. Great to be here. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm really, really excited about this one. I remember I met you a while ago at one of your seminars in a hotel. You were doing a gig there. And that day I said, one day I'm going to have Pat Slattery in my podcast. And here we go. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are. Right. That's what we're here to do, to maybe serve people and see what we yes. can do. To let's, let's provide as much value as we can. Absolutely. First question, Pat, could you tell us something about yourself? Because you finished school when you were 14. It's a very unusual story because usually, you know, people think that you have to go to college, all this, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you're a guy who finished school at 14 and you became extremely successful. Tell us your story, please, quickly. Well, okay, well, I, I mean, I left school at 14 out of necessity, right? It wasn't that, I, you know, no, of course, I didn't do too well at school, so they didn't want me to come back either, right? So it was a mutual decision. But at 14 years of age, I got a job. Now, I came from an environment where in, in my community, there was a bit, little bit over 6,000 people, but with over 80% unemployment. Mm. So even getting a job, I had already achieved what more than 80% of the people in my environment didn't achieve or couldn't achieve. So to me, I, I thought I was going to be in that job for the rest of my life. And, and that was my intention. I was going to be the absolute best that they had in that job, the, I, you know, that... In, and it was in the hotel industry, right? So I was going to be that guy that when you come to the hotel 50 years time, they're going, let me introduce you to Pat. You know, he's here for 50 years, right? That yeah, was yeah. me. That's what I thought. That's all. I, and that was my dream. And that was what I wanted. But for me, growing up in, in the environment I grew up in, and, you know, we grew up quite poor, right? Um, my parents were great parents, by the way. My, you know, my, my mom was exceptional in particular. She really made it work mm -hmm. that we, we, all, we were always provided for, you know. And of course, we went without certain things, but we didn't know any better. I mean, I, you know, sometimes when I tell my story, people go, oh, wow, well, you know, and I go, well, my story is not actually a sad story. I had a good, <laughs> good childhood. Yeah, I, there I had good fun. Yeah, nothing better right? out there. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, knew, we knew no different. But at 14 years of age, to be able to bring home some money, to bring money home and actually be able to contribute at home and I could see the difference that that made. And then I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to make more money. I didn't know how, I just knew I was. And, uh, and certainly I was never, in my mind, I was never going to lose this job. And the only way that could happen is by absolutely turning up and being the best I could be. I, I, I didn't have an education at 14. I didn't have, uh, I wasn't savvy to what was going on in the world. I mean, remember, I was, I was coming from a community you know, in the suburbs of Limerick City, and then all of a sudden I find myself at 14 years in the city mm -hmm. dealing with all these different people from different walks of life. <laughs> and I knew very little outside of my community. Other, you know, and now I'm meeting American people and, you know, and African people and, um, you know, Australians and Polish people and, you know, people I never met outside <laughs> of my community. <laughs> and so I was beginning to understand life, uh, if that makes sense. And, mm -hmm. and I got a great education from that. Yeah, life education. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely. But you pay attention. I look at these guys coming in who are getting off these buses or, or getting out, out of uh, limousines to come into this hotel. And I wonder, how could you do this? Mm. So I paid attention to them. I, I, I just had conversation and maybe I was picking things up naturally. But, uh, you know, the one thing I knew, I knew if I could be the best I could be, that I'll always be fine, I'll do okay. And I was getting the biggest tips, right, because, I was, because of how I was behaving. And as a result of that, that job was there. I mean, I was offered a full-time job. It was meant to be a summer job, right? I didn't want to go back to school. They didn't want me back in school, right? <laughs> so <coughs> I Work got for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it was a work for everybody, right? <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, f from there... I, I mean, I have nine brothers, right? So, um, I'm also any sister? Just brothers. I have six sisters. Oh, six so, sisters yeah. and nine brothers. Nine brothers. <laughs> yeah. So there's quite a lot of us there, you know. Uh. And um, but at 15 years old, one one of my brothers in, in, invited me to work on the door of a nightclub because somebody didn't show up for work, and uh, and I found I was good at that too. And again, I take the same attitude, and th and then think this is what's really important for people to understand. When you're getting out into business, you're getting started. It's your attitude that's going to make you successful, oh, not I your aptitude, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And and I took this attitude of being the best. Yeah, and because why not? Know. People always have this idea, oh, dude, let's do the bare minimum. Be the bloody best. Why yeah. not? Show up, show up. I mean, look, when people ask me for advice, and some people get it or they don't. Un unfortunately, there's always going to be a them and us, right? The boss and you, the boss and us. You know what? You you gotta go with a different attitude. I, I mean, any any time I went to work, any time I went and showed up for somebody else's business, I treated that like that was my business. Yeah. And as a result of that, what eventually what happened is my security business. Now I left home at sixteen, right? I left home and moved into the city because I had five jobs. 
You have right? five jobs. And uh, so I couldn't get home and get changed and be ready for my next job or even have dinner, right, to get to my next job. Right. So when I say I had five jobs, I had five jobs of working day and night. So I was working seven days a week, seven evenings a week. So I moved into a, a flat or, or you know, for anybody who's young enough, a flat is what we used to call flats are now apartments. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I moved into a flat when I was only 16. And uh, and eventually I started building my business. Um, not intentionally, no. I've got to tell you. Was that the security right? business? S- a security business. So again, because what was happening, because I showed up. And this is what's really important because when I showed up to work for somebody, I treated it like it was my own. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, I started getting other people coming to me and asking me to work for them. And this is how I ended up with five jobs. I kind of said, well, look, I'm only available these days. And they said, well, take it whatever day you're available. Because I am ver- I was always very loyal to the people that I worked with. Mm. So it doesn't matter. You this could come and offer key. me more, right? I, and this, is, this is really important because mm-hmm. the reason I say this, I'm sitting here in front of you 30 years later, a, bit, a little bit more than 30 years now, right? But the people I was dealing with 30 years ago are still friends of mine today. There's still people who do business with me today. There's still people who refer me to other people today. And that's because of being loyal to them and showing up and giving 100% every single time when I was just starting. So it's important never to forget that, you know, mm. never forget where, where you got your help and who supported you. And, uh, and show up for them every time you can. Yeah. This and is a good good tip for all the listeners. Is, yeah, this, is, this is the attitude you should have in the business. You know, this is what yeah. this podcast is all about. It, it, it's crucial. Uh, actually, it's crucial to your success. Because if you do, if you dismiss people, let me tell you, I mean, I don't care who you are. Most people, as you start to evolve, right, if you get into the world of becoming an entrepreneur, you start with one idea. And, and that evolves. And all of a sudden, other opportunities open themselves up to you. And you move into something else. Now, if you don't take care of the people in your first business, you're going to find it twice as hard to build your second business. But if you take care of the people in your first business and you show up for them, you're going to get so much support no matter what you do in your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your sixth business and so on. And in 20 years time, you'll get people who show up and support you because you showed up for them. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, a, it's, <clears> a, it's like a snowball effect. Absolutely. So this, so this to me is so important, so important that you show up and you give 100%. And if you, you know, the other side of that is if you don't like what you do, if you don't like the clients that you're dealing with, then fire them. Get out. Mm. Right? Because if it's... Hire fast and fire fast. Absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah, the we, rule. <laughs> we, we say, hire slow, fire fast. Yeah. Right? You know, but th- this is so oh, important. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a mistake here. Yeah, you're right. And, and um, well, this is so important for people to understand and, and to get this. And, you know... And and again, you show up every day and be the best you can be. You don't, you don't compete with people. We're not here to compete. You know, I see people, and, and, and I'm sure you get this, right? You'll get people who challenge you and they'll, they'll question you. Don't compete with them, mm. right? There's no competition out there. I don't care what industry. There are people who do something like you do. There are people who will never do what you do, mm. right? And they'll challenge you from time to time. Or somebody, you might recognize you as competition and they'll try and take you on. Don't ever think of anybody as competition, yeah. right? Get rid of the competition attitude and, and think to yourself, how do I show up and be a leader? That is all you got to do is show up and be a leader with nothing to prove, right? It's not about proving anybody wrong or being better than anybody. It's about wanting everybody else to win. Mm. Let everybody, everybody has their place in this world. My friend has a beautiful saying, you know what he says? If you want to make money and be successful, you have to have help other people to be successful and make money. Absolutely. And, and this is so true. I, I, I learned that, oh, wow, 28, maybe 29 years ago from Jim Rohn. Oh, really? Is that right? where he came from? So Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn said, if you want to become successful, then help others become successful. But there's also another great book that's well over 100 years old now. It's called The Science of Getting Rich. Science right? of Getting by, Rich by, who's that by? Wallace D. Wattles. Mm. Right? It's a very old, written in old English. As a matter of fact, a lot of people would know Bob Proctor in particular, in particular from The Secret, right? But Bob's initial programs all derive from the book, The Science of Getting Rich. And that was the, the programs he used to teach were The Science of Getting Rich programs. And this would be there. This book is older now than Think and Grow Rich. I tried reading that book. I, did, I did, couldn't get it. I'm a it's foreigner hard. with limited it's hard. language. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, it took me a couple of times. Yeah. <clears throat> but for me, you see, I, I only look for one or two nuggets. If I can find one or two in there. Yeah. But, but something, that, I mean, when I read that book, again, it must be over 30 years ago now. Uh, there was one line in that book that actually made me make the decision to do what I do today. What is right. it? When I read the book and we talked about helping the poor, because I came from a, a poor background, and yeah. I say that respectfully, yeah, by the yeah, way, yeah. to the people that I came from. You know, we, we didn't have a lot. Yeah. And on it, it said, how do you help the poor? Can you help the poor by giving them, giving to them, by feeding them and giving them money and so forth? And yes, you do. But the problem is you still keep them poor. 
So if you really want to help the poor, become rich and teach them how to do the same. Yeah. And that, I mean, when Beautiful. I read that, li- I read that line, and once I read that line, that that's the day I made a decision that I'm going to get into this industry. I I'm going to do what I do here because that's the reason for this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's and that and that's the, the reality is when you come with a with a good purpose, mm. then you know what the universe is a way of delivering everything that you ask of it. Mm. But you have to show up. Mm-hmm. It's not going to ask if you come with bad intention. Right? You have to come with the right, what's my intention here? What do I want to achieve? What do I want to achieve for the world? What do I want to achieve for me? And by the way, it's important that you achieve it for you too, mm-hmm. right? Because it all begins with you. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you, you, if, if you want to help people become rich, you can't help people become rich unless you know how to get there yourself. Let's be honest, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's why in that book, The Science of Getting Rich, for me, was making that choice to be, now rich, by the way, it, that, is determined by each individual. Exactly, right? yes, because some people think that you have to be, you have to have so many millions of euros in your bank account to be rich, but you can be successful without having loads of money. Let's say you want to do a lot of charity. There's people like there, Mother Teresa or, or you know, what the, all these people, they weren't necessarily rich in terms of value of money. But yeah, but, but they're rich in so many other ways. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, when you're rich in life, the money shows up anyway. Yeah. You kind of have no control over that. Yeah. It's going to come. Yeah, right. people say that about, you know, uh, girls who are, they say, oh, these type of girls only go after guys who have money. But the thing is that guys that have money, they're generally confident. They usually have a business. They usually know how to speak to people. You know, it, it, and the money is just a little bit of extra on top of all that personality. Well, look, I mean, you know, money, money is a good measurement of, of your sales activities and your sales achievements. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> now, money for me, I mean, I love money, by the way, just be to clarify that it's not I'm not oh, yes. <laughs> you know and, and it's it's a it's not the be all and end all for my life right but I, I have learned how to become friends with money and this is where the issue is you see most people have, have not learned how to become friends with money because they've been preconditioned to believe that money is the root of all evil right yeah. or and I will say this even respectfully when I was growing up as a kid anybody with money was the enemy Mm. Look, I th- there's a beautiful saying. People say that the money is the root of all evil, but I say that the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. Uh, well, well, actually, my, you know, my background right is in security, so I studied criminology for quite a long time as well, and I, and I, I wrote a lot of programs, and I wrote a program called the Motivation for Crime, right? Around oh. you know, because I want to understand what motivates people. Where could I find it? <clears throat> oh, you won't find it. It's not available other than I used to speak for chambers of commerce all over the world on this, oh, right? Okay. In, within my my background in the security industry, and I I just wanted to know because where I came from, there's a lot of crime, yeah. and I want to know what what would make us different than other people, and the reality is, is the lack of money is the root of all evil, <laughs> right? Exactly. Be- because there, you know what what what. Allows some, what motivates somebody to commit a crime? Well, I can tell you, first it begins with poverty, right? So poverty creates pain. And, and, and people will, will do anything to get out of pain. And unfortunately, sometimes they'll commit a crime because not only that, they haven't been educated how to do things differently. And then society p- puts a stamp on people and it makes the people feel that because you're from an area like that, you'll never amount to much. You won't have this, you won't have that. Sure, you're bound to be a criminal anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So all these different things are motivation for crime. And you... <clears throat> Excuse me. It's usually people with, with, and I say this respectfully, not everybody with money, <coughs> but a lot of people who would have more money than you would if you grew up in an environment I grew up in, who create that stigma, right? And then that becomes a, a program that people are conditioned to believe to be the truth. Mm. So that's why some people won't even give their address if they're from a certain area if they want to look for a job because they think if I give my address, I won't get the job, right? So all of this stuff that goes on in society actually creates this persona and where people believe to be the truth which is not right however if that's what your perception is that becomes your reality so we have to change the perception as well so people understand that the perception that you you have what life is really not your reality if you choose to change it so having the the opportunity to say to yourself okay if i have more money what can i do with it and for me the the opportunity to employ people it's funny because I only had this conversation with my son, one of my sons yesterday. And we talked about the area I came from and the people I, I gave jobs to and employed. And that was my one of my driving forces too, that I could find work for my friends. Mm. right? Because my friends were in the same position as me at that time. I was I was blessed. I, I don't believe I was lucky. I don't believe in luck. Yeah. I believe I put myself out there and I was blessed. And when the opportunity came my way, I got it and I took it and I made it happen. And then I had the opportunity now to reach out to some people in the environment I grew up in who are really good people and give them a different opportunity, a different view in life. And I got an opportunity to employ a lot of people, 
How many people years. did you employ at your peak? Oh, in in, in total, and yeah, uh, at, at your peak in your security company. Well, at my peak, I mean, I I would have a thousand guys working every weekend, right? So we because between working in in different sites and and nightclubs and bars and and concerts and festivals, I could have a thousand guys out working at a weekend, you know. And uh, but on average, we had two hundred eighty five full time. You know, full time doing sixty, seventy hours a week, right? Because the guys were hungry for overtime, mm. and um, but that would have been on a full time basis. So, <coughs> you know, but and, and again, I you know, people said to me, you know what? Well done, Pat. You made it happen. And the reality is, I didn't. My team made it happen. Yeah. The people I the, the guys who started with me, who stood side by side with me in the beginning, they, now they may not have had the same vision I had, and I say that again respectfully, but they were there. They were loyal. They were there with me, and they were the people that supported me, and they showed up and gave 100%, which is a culture I always brought into everything I do. And when people come working with me, I say, listen, we're here to give 100%. Anything below that is not okay, right? 100% means 100% of what I can give. And that doesn't mean that somebody else could come along and do a better job. Possibly that's that can happen. But nobody can be a better you. Nobody can give more than 100% of you other than you. So when you show up and give 100%, all of a sudden, again, more opportunities come your way. I mean, more opportunities come your way. Usually what happens is you if, if you see opportunities coming your way, then you're operating at a higher value, right? You've you got to think of yourself as a human being in a universe where you're all you're doing is offering value to, to the people you meet. The higher the value that you offer, right, the higher value opportunities are offered to you. That's what I'm saying. You, you kind of have no control over the money, Right, the money will come only as a result of what you do. Now, if you do it only for the reason of making the money, then you have a very different intention. You have to be very clear about that too. Right? Otherwise, pe- people will see through you and they'll feel that you're not congruent and you're not, you know, um, you're you're not the person that they may have thought they want to be doing business with. So you have to be very transparent. Mm. Okay, I uh, believe that this is absolutely in the rule number one way to, to, to do business. I think you know, yeah. especially in Ireland, because guess what? In Ireland, everybody knows each other. Oh. Everybody knows each other. <laughs> That's the truth. You can fart yeah. on one side of the city, yeah. and people will know on the other side. They yeah. will. Well, look, look, I mean, it's a six degrees of separation, right? I mean, you know, we 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 know this now, and particularly we're in 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 a world where we can access people through social media. It's so easy, you know, so easy, to, so easy to be found out. Mm. Right, yeah. you know, yeah. things and can go viral in an instant, especially an instant. with TikTok and all that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, just show up and be the best you can be. That is all you can. That's all. You, if you can only expect that of you, then let me tell you, that's going to be good enough. No, and don't compare yourself to anybody else. Right. Most people think you say, "Oh, yeah, I can do that, and this is as much as I can do." But they're much better than me. So what? You're not in, you're not competing here, and I understand that. If you if you understand, you're never competing. You just show up and be a leader, and you show up and lead the way in the way you want to be led, and the way you want to lead other people. That's your choice. If somebody else wants to do it another way, that's okay. Wish them well and let them on the road. Mm. Doesn't matter. Don't hate. Yeah, that's the main. Yeah, hundred percent. Because that type of uh, negativity, you know, if you start hating on other people and having that attitude, people will smell it from you as well. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, you know what? It's again. If you understand that everything everything in this universe, everything that you look at, everything that you think is just a 360-degree version of you, right? No matter what you think, whatever you put out there is what's going to come back. And when we talk about, again, operating in different frequencies and, you know, without getting too deep into this, right? Mm. And and it, it, it does make, make a serious impact on your business. We have to understand that whatever frequency you're operating at is what's going to come back to you. Mm. Right, or to we talk about it a little bit more because you have a serious amount of knowledge in that yeah. area as well. Frequency, energy, vibe. What the hell is this? Well, <laughs> well, here's how simple it is. Because people think it's a big woofy poofy stuff because they don't talk about it on television. <laughs> people seem to be under the impression that if it's not on TV, it must not be true. <laughs> well, well, listen, we we have millions of successful people in on this world that can. The proof is there that it's true. Yeah, but they don't talk right? about it on TV. <laughs> but you see, well, well, you see, you know what happens really, Lucas, is everybody wants a quick fix. Mm. Everybody wants instant gratification. Mm. They want, when they get an idea and they think they're going to do something, they want to win straight away. Mm. Not realizing it does take effort and it takes a bit of time. And if you're going to expect people to support you, you have to build relationships, right? This is what's really important. And you have to build relationships with people who are on the same par or above where you want to be at. And that's operating at different frequencies, if you like. Um, or, quite simply, you, I mean, I'm sure all of your listeners have probably heard this one, you are who you spend most of your time with, 
Yeah, this right? is a very big one. Can I just elaborate on this one a little bit? Because I had a gentleman, you know, he's a friend of a friend. He watches my podcast. He absolutely loves it. It motivates him. But he contacted me and so he said to me, Lucas, he says, how do I do what you do? Every time I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that, my friends call me and I end up on the drink and I might be doing this. And I said, how, how to limit friends and all that? And I said, what buddies? What are you talking about? You cannot be a successful businessman and hang around in a pub. It just doesn't work like that. So you have to cut your ties, you know? Yeah, there's, this is the <clears> one. <throat> there, there's, uh, I, mean, I mean, actually, there's an interesting story, right? Because I remember when, when I got a job in the hotel and I was 14 years old, right? And I had to dress really well because it was fairly upmarket. It was probably the most upmarket hotel in Limerick and probably one of the, the most upmarket in Munster at the time. So I had to dress really well. And uh, and the one thing I will say for my, my dad, my dad always dressed really well. His shoes would be polished, shined. You know, he used to say, you, you can tell the mark of a man by the cut of his shoes, right? Oh. And uh, he said, I don't care if your shoes are broken, polish them. Shine your shoes, right? And bring you, and when you walk out into the world, you walk out there and be the best you can be. And my dad wouldn't go around to the corner shop without having a shave, without him being groomed and putting on a shirt and tie and a jacket. Right, that, well, well. you know, he'd be a hundred years old now if he was still alive, right? So that'll give you that era, and that's the way people used to think. And um, so when when you go out into the world, you you have to present yourself in the best way you can, right? Based on whatever it is the marketplace you're going into. So I'm going into this hotel, so I had to have my. For me, I mean, I often laugh. My mum often tells story. I was a nightmare to iron a shirt for. Oh, because <laughs> if there was one wrinkle, I take it off and iron it again. Oh, really? I had to be perfect, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, but so I I remember one summer day. I was getting on the bus to go to work. So I was working in that evening. So I was getting on the bus around three thirty p.m. And uh, and then some of my old mates. So when I grew up, we used to swim in the river, right? So we'd we'd all head off, but two and a half, three miles from where we used to live, we'd go to the river and we'd swim in the river and that was our thing for the summer. And, and what great times we had there, you know? Oh, uh, that's the best. And, uh, that's how I spent my childhood as well. Yeah. <laughs> and but, but I remember this day, I was waiting for the bus and I was getting on the bus and some of my old mates were saying, oh, you know, they were all heading off with the towels around their shoulders and it was a really sunny day, you know? And, um, and they said, oh, are you coming with us? I said, guys, I have to go to work. And, and you were 14. I was 14. Yeah, all right. the boys on the bikes go into the yeah. river and you had to go and to I work. And I had to go well, to there work. You go. There you go. This is when and the success started. Well, well, it is. Uh, but I tell you something, honestly, it wasn't easy, right? Because they get started giving me a hard time, right? You know, oh, you think you're better than us now. You think you're this. Now, that was the old program that was running, if that makes sense from I exactly how people believe, right? And, um, and I remember getting on the bus and then they really started giving me a hard time. And I was thinking, I'm just going to get off the bus and punch the head off them. That's what I felt right at the time. And then I was getting on the bus going to work. And I sat on that bus going into the city thinking, what am I doing? I'm missing out my life. I want to be with my friends. You know, I almost, I almost got off the bus. I genuinely did. And that was because of peer pressure. Mm. And I say this respectfully, there was none of those guys going anywhere in life where to where I wanted to go. And that's not... Dismissing Not them is unimportant, I right? Understand, I understand, that was yeah. just a, a choice. And and the, the reason I say this, because you had mentioned something a moment ago about, you know, b- with your friends and going to the pub and so forth. And by the way, I, I like going to the pub still. I go on and meet some guys and it's rare <laughs> when I get a chance, but I do. And I'll have chat about life. I won't chat about my business. I won't chat about my goals. So if I go to Limerick and let's say we go to a rugby match and I meet some of my old friends that I played rugby with, we will talk about rugby all day long. We we'll talk about the old stories of the games we had as kids when, you know, somebody broke their arm or somebody got their nose smashed or, you know, <laughs> all the fun or the try that somebody scored or, you know, how great the winger this guy was and he should have made it. And we'll have those conversations. And that's okay to be in that circle of influence. But if I want to be successful, I have to make sacrifices sometimes. If I want to get out and achieve something, I understand that every single choice, and this is what's really important, every choice that you make. So if you choose to go to the pub, you're sacrificing something else for going to the pub. If you choose not going to the pub, then you're sacrificing going to the pub for something else, if that makes sense. But all I can tell you this is every single choice that you make, there's going to be a consequence. Every choice. There is nothing, right? Yeah, cause cause and effect. Right? Cause and effect, yeah. yeah. There is nothing not one single choice that you make that doesn't have a consequence or an outcome. And you have to understand, and for your listeners who are listening here, you have to understand that you get to choose this. 
Yeah, right? I laugh when people say I have no time, you know, because everybody has the same 24 hours in the day. Like, I I somehow manage all these businesses and go to the gym and, uh, you know, dating and all that stuff. I mean, I manage all that. I mean, people go to work for eight hours and they tell me that they don't have time to read a book for 20 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, you see, again, that's programming, right? And, yeah. and, and again, I want to be very respectful to people because I know there are some people who are probably going to watch this or listen in here and say, you know what, will I take the chance? Will I take the chance, right? And and again, and I hear this many, many times, will I take the chance? And I'm going to tell you, your life isn't determined by chance. Your life is determined by choice. If you're waiting for a chance, this is it, right? This is it right now. Take the chance and make better choices. And when you do that, you will decide, you will discover that things do work in your favor. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's never going to be easy, actually. You're going to be challenged more so than you've ever been challenged. Because like that, the things that you like to do, going to the pub, meeting up with the guys maybe is one thing that you like to do. I mean, you're going to have to sacrifice that for a while. Yeah, right? for a while or forever. Yeah, or forever. Yeah. I'd, say, I'd say my golden recipe would be to somebody, whoever is watching and trying to start something, I always say to people, disappear for six months. Do, don't tell yourself that you're going to do it forever, but once you do it for six months and completely cut yourself off, you know, and dedicate yourself to education and business. Absolutely. Would you agree? Uh, oh, absolutely. I, well, I mean, again, uh, I think it was Jim Rohn. I mean, he talked about, you know, because people say I need a bit of motivation, right? People talk about motivation. And, and I love it, this topic. Right? <coughs> well, well, it, it was, it, I mean, motiv- everybody is motivated, regardless. Everybody has motivation. People need inspiration, right? But Jim said, you know, he, he said he was talking to somebody and they were saying, you know, I, I, we just need to motivate these people. We need to motivate our team. We need to motivate these people. He said, yeah, but he said, you know what the problem with that is? He said, you find an idiot and you motivate him. Now what have you got? A motivated idiot, right? <laughs> this is not going to help you. Do you know what I'm saying? So we have to figure out different ways. And, and part, of the, part of the issue, and I, I've just discussed this. I was doing an event on Monday evening in, in Donegal, right? And I was talking with a whole pile of people that I work with, some of my clients. And we talked about this. And here's, here's something that I became very aware of. And it was again, it was something that came through Jim Rohn, that... For most people in this world, when they leave school, they stop educating themselves, yeah. right? Now, you think about that. They spend so much time in school trying to educate themselves, and they eventually go and get a job. Yeah. And they work in that that's job, it. and they stop reading, they stop educating, they that's stop learning. It. That's when they should start education. Exactly. That's why I, this, is, this is crazy, because I resonate and I agree with 100% everything that you say, and I completely repeat it all the time. Yeah, you know, so um, I usually say to people, and it's as ignorant as it sounds, you know, I say that uh, it's good to tell yourself that you're stupid. Because the moment you tell yourself, oh, I finished college and I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, that's what that those people do not educate themselves on anything. No, well, they think they know everything. <laughs> I, 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 about 14, 14, maybe possibly 15 years ago, uh, one of our seminars, uh, we had a guy called Mark Victor Hansen. He's one. Of, he's the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. Oh, okay. right? So they've written 600, 600 million copies of their books have sold, right? And and the One Minute Millionaire, and you know, he's so he's he's done it quite a lot and uh, and he said something that really resonated and he said remember this the more you learn the more you earn the more you learn the more you earn the more you learn right? the more you earn so the more you can keep educating yourself so yes I read books and I will also the thing for me about reading books I have more than a thousand books right in my in my library at home I've read every one of them more than once mm. right um, some of them I, I still read I go back over them and I revise them and so forth but I made a rule for myself quite a few years ago is when I read a book so if I take a book and I read a book and if I I take a highlighter with me when I'm reading a book now mm-hmm. so as I'm reading something if I read chapter one and I highlight something in chapter one that I've highlighted that means that something really stood out to me that's what I call actionable mm-hmm. okay a nugget. and if <laughs> I highlight something that's actionable I will not read chapter two until, until I action whatever it is I highlighted. This is so good. Everybody should listen to that. Right. Guys, listen to this because there's so, there's so, something called uh, knowledge junkie. People who read books and they never apply any knowledge. Don't be that guy. And this is a beautiful, beautiful technique. Now, I was that guy too, by the way. Right? We used to say I had a whole book fu- bu- a bookshelf full of shelf development. <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> and, uh, and I was that guy. And I was, I mean, in the early days, I, I was listening to these and I was fascinated by them. And I thought, whoa, aren't these wonderful people? Because most of them, of course, at the time are American, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, aren't, aren't those people in America wonderful people? And I, I, I love listening to them. And I was, and I was feeling them. 
But uh, it doesn't mean I was doing it mm-hmm. initially. <laughs> and until it, until a day came that I made a choice to do with what I was learning. Mm. And that's when things really started to change. Mm-hmm. Because as I started building my career and building my business, I didn't even think I was building a business. Honestly, I was building a business. And, and somebody came to me, um, I set up a peer group because I was listening to these guys talking about peer groups. And I wanted to say, I need to set up a peer group. And funny enough, I went to one of my, my top clients, my biggest clients, a serious developer actually. And uh, I met him in the Clarion Hotel in Limerick one morning. And I went to him and said, Pat, I said, I want you to be in my peer group. And he said, what's a peer group? And I said, ah, Jesus, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I had to figure it out myself, right? What do I actually really want? To, you know, oh. what do I, and what can I, and I had to think, what can I contribute? So I just said, we'll meet you tomorrow for a cup of coffee. So I met him the following day and said, here's what I'm thinking. Here's the idea I have. And he said, yeah, I'm up for that, right? And all we done, we, we, my first peer group, we met for 15 minutes. Every Monday morning, 15 minutes. No time wasting, no nonsense, straight down to business. And what would happen is each one of us would come and we'd have something. Here's something we have. Here's something we want to do. Here's how I think I'm going to do it. Now tell me what I can do better. Mm. And that's all we focus on, everything we could do better. But I remember one day in, in the meeting, so we the meetings kind of evolved. and we, we How we just, old were you back then? Oh, what age was I? Good God, it's 27 years ago. I'm, 50, I'm 52 tomorrow actually oh happy right. birthday so it is tomorrow isn't it today is the 30th yeah I didn't know that if it wasn't so before 12 o'clock I'd crack open yeah. a bottle of whiskey <laughs> so, here you <laughs> so 52 tomorrow so that would have been 27 years ago right so I would have been what 23 is that right or 20, pretty 20, young you know? so you're, you're, you've been very ambitious from the yeah. early age you know well well, you know something honestly it, it, the ambition came after the passion right Um, I just wanted to make things happen that's all and I I'm, I'm one thing I'm very, very grateful for. I went through a lot of challenges, Lucas. Mm. I mean, serious, serious challenges. But nobody ever taught me about failure. I didn't know anything about failure. I was failing big time. Mm-hmm. Big, I mean, big time. Mm. But I didn't know I was failing, so I kept going. Mm. Because I grew up, my whole life was about survival. So in the early days, when I was going through all the challenges I was going through, I just thought, I thought everybody went through this. I thought mm. it was normal because yeah. I spent a life this of survival. Something, this is something the young generation doesn't really understand, that you have to fail. The, f- the more you fail, who said that? Somebody said it, that, that, you know, if you want to double your, uh, the rate of your success, you have to double the rate of your failure. That's yeah. That's it. And, and, and failure is great, by the way. Failure is great. That's, a, that's your learning process. That's where you, when we talk about the more you learn, the more you earn. Mm. The more you fail, the more you learn. Yeah. Right. So the money fail, you know, the money now, <laughs> now, I would say this. I don't encourage people to go out and seek failure. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be, but to understand what it is, what it is. It's just an obstacle. And, and um, I, again, I, w- I was doing a talk last week. I had about 4,000 uh, transition year students, right? We were doing a talk. And, was, and, um, and it was fantastic, right? Because we could get inside the minds of 16-year-olds. And part of it was telling my story. And, and something I keep hearing people say a lot of, you know, every time I try to do this, there's always something that gets in the way. And by the way, life gets in the way. But if you understand this, that you whatever it is you choose to do, whether it's what you do for a living or your life, is your relationships, everything. You know, and, and again, it sounds like an old cliche that you are the master of your destiny. You choose. And when you choose to be the master of your destiny, notice that there will be obstacles, there will be challenges, there will be failures. But the master knows that everything is on the way, not in the way. And when you're going through them, you know this is just on the way. It's on the way to something more. It's on the way to something better. And I'll find that by living through this journey. And I have a very good friend of mine who actually used to live very close to where we are right now. right? And he was probably my closest confidant. And he passed away just over two years ago. And um, I remember many years ago, and I was, I was going through a major challenge major challenge right and and it was f- impacting me and I was frustrated and angry and so forth and trying to figure a way through it and so I'm on a, on, a, on a call with him and he said let me tell you Pat right now he said I, you need to understand something he said what you're having right now is an experience he said and with experiences and, and I say this to your listeners here everybody everything you're doing is just an experience life is just an experience that's all it is but we, we, we don't own this we're going to have to give it back this body sometime mm-hmm. right we're mm-hmm. going to lose this body sometime we're going to yeah. run out of time very short so this well. is an experience right <laughs> the short, we're here for a short yeah. amount of time as well And um, but I said for 
people, and particularly men, men more so, will do anything to avoid an experience that they don't like. They'll duck and they'll dive, they'll try and get around it, or get under it, get over it. I think it. it's hardwired into our brains to so, to c- conserve energy mm. from a yeah. cave from a cave mile. Well, well it's, a, it's the fight or flight <coughs> syndrome, right? Yeah. You know? But but the reality is though, the only way to have an experience is actually to go through it. Mm-hmm. That's the only way. So allow yourself if you're going through a challenge, you're going through something, even by the way, if you're going through something really good, allow yourself to go through it and actually enjoy that journey. And it may be painful at times, but just know that all you're doing is you're going through an experience. And someday when you come through it and you you will come out the other side, you're gonna look back and go, What the hell was all that about anyway? What was I so worried about? And he was so right. And you know, and that was a great learning for me too, to be able to know that everything we're having right now is just an experience. And sometimes there'll be pleasant experiences and sometimes there won't be pleasant experiences. But that's all they are. So if you allow yourself to go through it, so when you're being challenged and you're mastering your life, you're mastering your destiny, you know that this is just on the way, it's not in the way. Because there's nothing can stop you, actually. Nothing can stop you. No. Right? You know, so... The the only limits people have is the ones that they put on themselves. Absolutely. And... But, and again, we say this respectfully, right? Because we want to educate people here. We want people to think differently. You know, people, because, <coughs> excuse me, when people say, I'm my own worst enemy. I keep putting limits on me and so forth, right? And, and that is true in some ways. But the real reality is, this is just information that they've downloaded from their past that they've been programmed to believe is the truth. Where they think, okay, I keep putting these things in front of I keep putting challenges in front of me. Well, that's an old story that they've borrowed from somebody else. Yeah. Right? So usually their parents, with, with yeah. unconsciously. Un- unconsciously, by the way. And, uh, 100%. I mean, most people, this is, this is why we talk about conformity, right? Which is, of course, is a whole other story. But people have been programmed to conform. And, you know, it's it's funny, being, when we, again, we talked about money earlier and, you know, the money being the root to all evil. Well, who really wants you to believe that? The people that want you to believe that are the people with more money because they don't want you to have some of theirs, right? The, the greed gets in the way. There's so much money. There is more. There is enough money in the world for everybody. Now, we all, we can say, okay, well, there should be people with righteousness and so forth and those who have the money should give it away. Listen, that's not going to happen, mm. Right. And and this they usually don't even want to pay taxes. Never mind yeah. giving it away. <laughs> it's not. It, they don't want to give it away. They they feel they've earned it. Whatever for whatever reason. No, I, I can tell you. I know a lot of people who are extremely wealthy, who are serious philanthropists, and they do give it away. But they just don't. They don't stand up to get their picture in the paper. They're better than that. Right? Yes. So that's where true help yeah. is. And there's plenty of that happening. Mm. But I can say something honestly to people is. Every single person, every single person, anybody who's listening or watching here, I can tell you this, you're already millionaires. You just have to go and cash it in. <laughs> it's out there waiting for you. And yeah. you cash it in by showing up every day and by finding something, finding something you can do to make a difference that people will see more value. And if you're in business, then you know what? Find the best people, the best customers, the best teams, the best staff, the best suppliers, the just best of everything. The best. Right? And let me tell you, that money is there. If you show up every day, the money is going to show up too. And when that money shows up, you get to choose what you want to do with it. Problem is that people don't want to be the best, isn't it? People are afraid of being the best because it takes energy. <laughs> well, isn't I, it? Well, there's, there's an element to that, right? I mean, we, we look at we look at what you call the eighty twenty rule, right? Yeah. You know, my favorite rule in the world. Yeah. Well, the bottom twenty percent of the people will never. I mean, and I say this again respectfully: they will never amount to much because they don't choose. They choose different things. All they want to do is pull people down, right? And they want to, you know, anybody who's paying attention here will notice. If you look at your friends. You think about all of your friends. The bottom 20% of your friends cause 80% of the problems, cause 80% of the arguments, 80% of the fallouts, right? The bottom 20% of your clients take up 80% of your time and probably only pay you 20% of the money, right? If you're in a work environment, you will notice that the bottom 20% of the staff, again, cause 80% of the problems. Now, when we flip that on the side and we say, okay, let's think of the 2080 now. You will notice also in the staff environment that the top 20% of the staff do 80% of the work, right? The top 20% of your friends or family give you 80% of your support. The top 20% of your clients pay you 80% of your money and only take up 20% of your time. So what people have to do is become consciously aware of what it is they're doing, who they're doing it for, and who do they want in their circle of influence, and choose only to work with people in the top 20% and put yourself into that position. Now, we also have another saying, it's like my, myself and, and my wife Donna, right? We talk about different things 
and we talk about love, by the way, right? Because we're both very much in love. And we have this belief, you know, and we tell each other maybe a hundred times a day, actually. Well right? done. A hundred well times done. a day. And my, my kids know. I tell them every day that I love them. This is very important. You know, there's an experiment. Can I just switch off topic? I did an experiment on the rice. Have you ever heard of the rice experiment where you talk to a bowl of rice? <laughs> I did it and it worked. So you take two glasses of rice and you put rice in them, right? And you talk to one of the glasses with love and intention. You actually resonate, you generate that energy, you send it to your tour the eye, blah, blah, blah. And then the second glass of rice you hate, right? Mm -hmm. And the glasses go off in a different time. You know, this the glass that the glass of rice that you love doesn't go off. It's it's like a, like a pure snowflake for after a couple of days. And the other one is completely gone. So I think look, telling people that you love them is very important, especially if you weren't told as a child. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of us out there, you know. I, I, yeah. Nobody told me that they love me really. Like, I mean, there wasn't. <laughs> oh, well, look, we couldn't, we couldn't use that word. That was a four-letter uh, word uh, we couldn't gay. use, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so it wouldn't happen. But but we have this this other belief, and this is what I'm going to say to people who who are thinking about becoming mm. entrepreneurs who who want. And, and sometimes people say, "I know I want to do something," and they just don't know what to do. Mm. Well, I can tell you this: just be the best you, and it'll find you. Be the best right? version of yourself. Absolutely. But how how do you become a best version? Because so, if somebody is at the very lowest, you know, would you have any advice? How do you become a good version? Because we're talking a lot of stuff here, but how, like how? Well, I mean, somebody's well, starting from nothing and they want to become the best. It's it To me, it, it's simple but not easy, right? You've heard that one before. It's simple because <laughs> it can be done. It's not easy because you have to do it. <laughs> and um, and it's like, again, even I suppose to finish what I was saying, we're, we're seven Donna, we, we may tell that, but we have this belief where we say, show, don't tell. Show me, right? So show me you love me. Show me your, your intention. Show me that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. But talk is cheap, right? I mean, we've heard many, many times talk is cheap and everybody can talk a great story. But you've got to walk your talk, right? So when you say to somebody, you know what? I'm going to go out there. I don't know how just yet. And for me, I didn't, I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't. Back in the early days, did I think I was going to get to where I got to achieve what I've achieved? Not a hope. I didn't. But I knew for sure I was going to, whatever I promised I was going to deliver on. I always knew that. I always knew that if I show up today and be the best I can be, that's all I can be, by the way. And then if I can do that, I don't have to compare myself with anybody else in the world other than don't I can worry, just be the best. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah. Just worry about that. Yeah. So when I showed up, it doesn't matter what was going on in my life. I showed up with a smile on my face. I showed up with intention. Now, whoever, my intention always was when somebody met me, when you come into that hotel, you knew you were in good hands. You were going to feel a hell of a lot better when you walked away from me than you did before you met me, right? And I was going to share. I was going to. I was going to give you a welcome like you never would have got, right? And I knew. And that. And that was, respectfully for me, it was driven by fear because I was in fear of losing that job. The only way I couldn't lose that job was if I'd be the best I could be, not realizing actually the positive impact that was happening. And as I educated myself, and as I started listening and learning, and you know. Um, we didn't have podcasts, we had cassette tapes. Yes, right? could, could we talk <coughs> about that a little bit later? Because now it's so easy to educate yourself. We have Audible, we have access to everything. Mm. We have podcasts where we have interesting people like yourself. And it's for free on Spotify. Yeah. But back in the early 80s, how, did, how did it happen back then? Well, well i tell you the truth. I, I remember um, in Cruises Hotel, where I was working, they were building this nightclub down in the basement. And there was a, a group of guys from Donegal who came in. <coughs> and they were building and so they were staying in the hotel and it was this guy there Sammy was his name he was a real character and uh, so he was living in the hotel and I remember in, in they had all these pictures around the hotel of, of old Limerick and the siege of Limerick and the history and so forth you know and and Sammy <laughs> there was a couple of Americans reading this and Sammy looked at me and gave me a wink right and he stands behind him he goes I remember my great grandpappy telling me all about this and he was giving them all this story and they were fascinated by him. Now, this guy was just reading it was on the wall. He knew nothing about Limerick. And uh, the next thing he'd go, oh, can we buy you a drink? And he said, well, I'm down here without my family. And, I'm, and so, so he would have drink in the bar every night for free, right? <laughs> <coughs> and I thought, what's going on here? Here's this guy who's getting rewarded and I say this respectfully for bullshitting, right? <laughs> Yet I know the history of Limerick because I loved loved Limerick. I knew the, I walked. I used to walk so many places with my dad. We walked all over Limerick and, and got to learn about it, you know. And um, and I realised actually stories. Stories are what are important here. 
So I started telling stories. I started thinking about, you know, when, when the, the guests would come and I'm bringing their luggage to the rooms for them and I'd ask them where they're going, what are the tours, and I would mention places that are completely off the beaten track that most people wouldn't know about. And they'd come back to the hotel and they'd go, oh my God, Pat, we, we went there, it was brilliant, we saw that. And before I knew it, I was getting three times as much tips in a week as I was in my wages, wow, yeah. right? So I knew, uh, all I was doing was serving people, mm. right? And I knew then that, you know what, stories tell, I, I wasn't bullshitting people, I was giving people facts, I was giving them something extraordinary that they were finding that was making an impact. So I understood the importance of storytelling. Mm. And again, uh, when you tell those stories, you have to people step up and back them up, you know what I'm saying? So I could have sat back and thought, whoa, this guy Sammy is fascinating, but I didn't learn something from this. And I thought, how can I use this to benefit me in a positive way? But it created a win-win for everybody. I never asked for payment, but I got rewarded as a result of being the best I could be. Mm. Right? And being the best, I just wanted it. I wanted every person to come into that hotel and met me to walk away with a good experience. So I started telling those stories without expectation. And, you know... At the time, my wages, I used to get paid £35 a week, right? So it was 1984. £35 a week. Right? Yeah, £35 a week. That was a ton of money back then. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean, I often, you know, I would get, you know, seven families coming in throughout the day, for like, or couples or groups. And, you know, I could get 5 to £10 tip per day from some of these people per group. So I often made it more in one day on tips than I did on my my um, full week's wages. And it was funny because we, we had a, the head barman, Jeez, Brian. You were rich. You were a rich <coughs> I, I, I felt like I was rich. You didn't like that. I mean, I had a, whoa. You know, I, I remember I could go up the street now and buy a good pair of shoes. Did you right. make? Did you? Were you making more money than your parents back then? Oh yeah. Well, well, you see, my parents because my dad broke his back when he was forty-two, right? So mm. he, he didn't. He couldn't work anymore. Um, so was there such a thing as social welfare back then? Social was, welfare, was he, he yeah. Had something. Yeah, and there was no such thing as compensation claims, right? So there was no big lump sums in our house. So my dad had a pension. And and back then, the, the, the father, the man was the, the earner in the house. So the man got the pension. And that was distributed throughout the whole house. So my dad's pension was £71 a week. So that's what we had to live with. Right now, we weren't all living at home at any time. I mean, you know, some of my brothers and that had married and moved on and everything else already. But, you know, give or take, there could be between nine and 11 of us at home. Right. So, you know, it takes a long way to stretch that money. You know, and, and this is why I talk about, people talk to me about, you know, you know, you know, I've worked with some of the greatest minds in the world, right, when, when it comes to... I want to move to that in a few seconds. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and um, <coughs> and somebody asked me, you know, we wrote a book there, the Be Life or Belief, and uh, and I contributed a chapter on that, and somebody asked me, well, actually, Donna asked me, so you write about inspiration. And because people kept asking me, who's your greatest inspiration? Where, you know, because I would have worked with Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and Mark Victor Hansen. You've worked with Tony Robbins as well? Yeah, and and his son, Jarek. We've had Jarek here in, in... just up the road here in the Ray Cow Hotel wow. speaking in our seminar, right? Wow. And um, and I started thinking about them and I thought, wow, you know, and then as I was thinking, I started to find myself going back to people that were in my life pre me even understanding what I was doing. And the truth is, I, I goes way back to my mum. And I look at where did my inspiration come from? Because my mum, on that money, because we, we lived in, you know, as I said, about four miles outside the city. My mum would walk into that city about uh, twice twice a week, to do shopping because you go to the bigger supermarkets because you stretch your money that little bit further, right? And walk home four miles with seven or eight full shopping bags, carry them in her hands and walk home that night. And I often look, I see people complain now when they get out of the car at the garage forecourt and get a small bag of shopping and they complain that it's hurting their fingers. And I look at, you know what, the, my mom never complained. Uh, I get goosebumps as you know? talk to her. Yeah, so, so now you look at her in all weather, by the way, in all weather, she would walk into the city and make her pound go that little bit further. So we always had food on our table. You know, now we didn't have any, you know, treats as such that often, right? But we always had food on our table and that was down to my mum in, in, a, in a time where it, would, it had to be very tough for her. Had to be. She never complained. She just got on and done what needed to get done. And that's where I find, I suppose, when I look back, my inspiration maybe have come from. I believe that's where it come from. I've met some extraordinary people and when I talk about extraordinary people, I'm not just talking about the big names that people know. Like, I, I was at a talk uh, maybe about six or seven years ago. And one guy, one guy came up to me and said, Paddy, said, where do you get your inspiration from for what you do, your talks and the, and the information you give? And the truth is, I get it actually from sitting here with people like you, Lucas. The questions that you ask, the people I meet every single day. 
that's where my inspiration comes from. I want to find the answer that serves as many people as I can possibly serve. Not necessarily the, the clever answer from the, you know, the, the so-called gurus of the world or whatever, right? I want to find people who are really feeling it on the ground. And everything I do and everything I teach is based on what I've discovered over 27 years doing this, by the way. You know, and, and, and that's what, and, and I take that inspiration from there and I find the answers. And I, I will say in most cases I have the answer because I probably experienced it myself personally. And, and you know, I've, God, I've done definitely hundreds if not at this stage a couple of thousand podcasts by the way right yeah, and, and I want to talk, you know? talk about your seminar business because you're really genuine you're at the international speaker there's not many guys like you in Ireland you know there is there are some guys but you know you really went across the world and you really must like half of those books behind me here whoever is listening to this <coughs> on Spotify please go to our Instagram you will see those books but half of those guys you've been on the stage with those guys you shook yeah. hands with them you know that's this is what I want to talk about next you know yeah. but, but how did, how we, we brought them here to Ireland to speak at our seminars here in Ireland. And that, to me, was it was what, what we always wanted to do, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and to get them to come. And now we, we have these people who want to come and speak at our seminars in Ireland. These are the people that we dreamed about sharing the stage with, and most people dream about sharing the stage with. And these are our peers now. They are friends, actually, you know. And um, could, we, could, we <coughs> let, could we let our listeners <coughs> know why it's important to go to seminars like that? It's all about networking. Could you share some of this? Because there's guys who are watching this and they've never been to one seminar. Uh, you know what? Why, why should you go? And why you've been doing a big mistake if you don't? Go to those meetings, to those seminars, meet the, those guys. The, 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 the most important thing about going to these seminars, you're always going to learn something new. Always. Yeah. And, if, and, and I say this respectfully, right, because people talk about, you know, they've come to the conclusion that this is not for me. When you come to conclusion, you're dead. Right, Con- conclusion means the end. It's the end of something, so you're never going to grow anymore. So that means if you, in your mind, if you come to conclusions, then the journey, the next journey is on the way down now, not on the way up anymore. Right, so if you have a conclusion, you come to a decision that this is how, this is it, this is as far as I need to go, then let me tell you, unfortunately, your, your, your intellect is dropping and, and so forth, right? Mm. But your opportunity, you're losing opportunity too. So when I, when I look at these seminars, yes, I learn something from the speakers. I always take something away from the speakers. But I also network with the people in the audience. And, you know, this is something that, you, that we know for sure, even with our seminars, and, and we've asked the question many, many times. Most people are going to be challenged. If, if you're, you have people watching this, you said, who are going to become entrepreneurial and want to get out into the world to do something new, do something different with their life, and have a dream or a vision or something. And the reality is 80% of the people in me are going to knock them back. They're going to knock back their idea. Right, because they just don't get it. They don't understand. It's nothing to do with you. It's not that they're smarter than no more. I actually will tell you, those that knock you back probably know a hell of a lot less than what you know. Right? Don't listen to them. The beautiful thing about being in a room in a seminar. So, like we have, you know, we have a seminar. Let's let's say simplicity is a hundred people in the room, and you come into that room, right? So let's say, Lucas, you come in that room. You know nobody in that room, but you're there because you have a vision. You have this this knowing, by the way, not even a want, not even a desire anymore. You have a knowing that there's something more. Something inside you tells you there's something more that you can be, do, or have. Mm -hmm. And you're okay with that. You might not even be sure yet what it is, or you might have some idea. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this. If you're in a room with 100 people, even though they're strangers to you right now, the people who come to those seminars are of the same way of thinking. And whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you want, I can guarantee you that every other person in that room wants it for you too. They have their own wants. They have the things yeah, that they want to achieve. They're a different breed of people. This is what I said on my previous podcast about our listeners. Because guess what? There's not one, excuse the word, idiot watching this. Because whoever lasted through 60 minutes, this interview is already 16 minutes long. About Whoever lasted through 60 minutes of us talking, they are only motivated people. They're only people who want better from life. There's, we get no hate on this podcast, by the way. Yeah, but there's only intelligent people watching us. <laughs> that, I, 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 honestly, even if you did have hate, it wouldn't bother me. Oh, it wouldn't bother me I, as well. Just, but I know, just let it go. Just don't go there. But the point we're making right. is whoever mm. goes to seminar are yeah. those type of people. That's why it's very important to go to those meetings. Absolutely. And and look, I, I on again, on Monday night, I had a group in and we've created a whole pile of strategic partners. You want to see the amount of business that's happening in two days. In two days, right? I had one guy there who... who when we're talking about where he's at, and I facilitate this sometimes. And, it, you know, it's different seminars we do for different reasons, but this particular one was very 
structured her own business and brainstorming her own business. And now one, one guy who was struggling has walked away with seven grade A, no, they're prospects at the moment, people that he would dream as having for clients. And he has people who are saying that they know them, they're bringing them to meet them for coffee, they're going to make an introduction, and there's a very strong chance he's going to get some of that business. So he even got five of those clients. As he said, if he got seven clients, that's him taking care of for more than a year. And we can do that in literally five minutes in a room with people, with like, like-minded like people, right? So, you know, the, the other side of that is we have to understand we're building relationships with people too because business is all about relationships, right? 100%. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, especially in Ireland. <laughs> people talk. <laughs> uh, well, look, People it, like word of mouth here. Yeah. And, and remember this too, by the way. If you don't show up, nobody knows you exist, right? So show up. If you really want to grow your business, put the time and effort into the people. If you put the time and effort into the people, then I can guarantee you, you're going to get results. There, it's it's almost impossible, unless, I say it disrespectfully, unless you're an ass, right? You can't help this. It's going to grow. Your business is going to grow if you put time and effort into people, right? But do we good. don't do it with the expectation, oh, I'll get, if I do this, I'll get this back. That, you can't do it for that reason. you got to do it with good intention. And you, and you will be rewarded. That's the reality, right? I, I mean... I think it's Brian Tracy that says that no, no, nothing that you do, there's no work that you do that goes unrewarded once you do it with the right intention. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And this is really important yeah. to understand. Yeah. People, think, people, by the way, think that there's money in this podcast. <laughs> it's not, is it? <laughs> no, but, you, but you know, the, 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 the truth is we're all only messengers, yeah. right? And if you carry the message, and this is what you're doing here with your podcast, is you're carrying the message. Maybe today there'll be people who listen and might not resonate with what I'm saying, and that's okay too. But the next guest you have on, something will something will strike. And the reality is, you know, most people, we, as we mentioned earlier, have been conditioned through programming because they've downloaded information from the past. Somebody shared stories, and, and you know, people share stories, right? Particularly if you go back into war times and the whole lot of the older the people, they tell you all the, the stories of how it was. And, and the funny thing is, your your memory in some cases is actually not reality at all. You have no memory. Your memory is just a reflection of a story that somebody has told you and it becomes your reality, right? So you might think you know something about something, but the reality is it's just a reflection of a, of a memory from a story that might have been shared with you. So if, if people are, are, and we've been through some tough times and people like to talk about the tough times, and sometimes they, they'll share a story and it, it resonates and they download inf- people download this information and they store it. And it almost becomes a reality. The moment they think about, oh, will I, ma- will I give it a go? Will I get out there and will I make a decision to become an entrepreneur or run my own business? And then all of a sudden, this whole story clicks in. The brain, by the way, is, is hardwired to protect you. It starts to think differently and it says, hey, hang on a moment. I, ha- I heard somewhere that nine out of ten businesses fail. And this is a conversation that's going on unconsciously. And that's why people go, oh, and they start, when you get that feeling and those thoughts, it starts to spark off certain emotions. So that emotion, if it becomes a negative thought, it sparks in a negative emotion. So you start feeling differently about whether I'm prepared to take a chance. And the more you think about it, then what happens is you start thinking about the failure and the pain and everything else. So it's easier to say, no, I won't do it. So we have to change that program and we have to switch it. And all we're doing is, is we're just changing the program. Right, so by doing what you're doing here with this podcast and sharing these messages, is actually changing the program. Somewhere out there, somebody out there is downloading some of this information, and now they're storing good information as opposed to what they've been used to. And somewhere along the way, that program is going to kick in when they see an opportunity. Go, I know what it is. I heard that one day on this podcast. They might not even remember your name, my name, or what podcast. It doesn't matter, as long as they get the message, right? And they pick up on that message, and you go, Got it, I got it. This is it, and they know what they need to do because they've downloaded this new information. You know what I'm I saying? keep telling to people because it's all about the information you download into your brain. That's why I said that I would never, ever, ever let the, the, let a, a TV to be in my house connected to the whole, whatever you call it. <laughs> I would never have that yeah. in my house. Look, I mean, you know, I I I mean I love watching movies, right? I'll watch a oh, movie. Oh yeah, watch movies. Yeah. Put on your but whatever you you're choosing which movie, but the whole commercials and all no, that series, no. the drama. We, this is yeah. programming. We, we, we don't watch the news, right? Ever. We don't listen oh. to the news. <laughs> the worst thing and, uh, you can watch is news. I tell yeah. you. You know, I know. You know, people say to me, "Oh, well, how how are you meant to know what's going on in the world?" Let me tell you. I, find out from people around you. Somebody me. will tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and you know what? If it doesn't, 
If it doesn't matter to me, and I say, like, people say, how could you not care about? I don't. That doesn't mean I don't when care. When was the last time you watched the news? I couldn't tell you. Ten years ago? Oh no, it's a lot longer than that. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, You're it's, a perfectly it's, it's successful a lot longer than business that. one. Yeah. Well, there's a, there you go, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't pay attention to the news. Yeah. It doesn't serve me. Do you listen me. to radio? I listen to music. I yeah, listen. but do you listen to radio? The, 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 you know, oh, they put on the TV and they talk about the cases and the, all no, that stuff. No, no, I don't. I don't do chat shows. I don't do, you know. But there you guys. I'm not yeah. the only one. I always no. keep telling people to no. turn it off, turn yeah. it off. And there we have a guy like yourself yeah. saying this. Oh, you verify me. <laughs> yeah, that, and, and but it's true. Yeah, it's true, right? I mean, I have only a certain amount of space in my brain, right? I want to. I want to store. If I think about my storage space. Like you're here in your premises, I only want to store what's good value to me. Yeah. Right? To put all the good value and the good value will remain. Absolutely. So why would I let any other nonsense in? You know, I tell people this, but education is so important. People think that I'm special because I have these businesses, I do this, the car business. How could you have it all on autopilot? People don't realize that I am below average when it comes to intelligence and IQ. I can't perform simple maths without calculator. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know I mean? but it's all about the stories that I have put into my head and now are helping me in business because I've been listening to the audiobooks, even the stuff from the 80s that I didn't even understand at the time. You know? Well, you know what, Lucas, it's, it's a simple, it's a can-do attitude, mm. right? It's a can-do it. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what comes up in my life. I still show up mm. and, I, and I know I can do whatever I want to do. And that's why, why you're doing what you're doing. You have this, you know, and everybody has it, by the way. Everybody has it. Not everybody will show up and do it. And that's really where it takes. It takes showing up. And because showing up sometimes means you're going to get challenged, you're going to get ridiculed, you're going to be, you know, sometimes this is what happens for people. And that fear is what gets in the way. Plus, they go, well, what if I don't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, the truth is you have no idea whether it's going to work or not because you've never gone here before. Yeah. Right? So, you know what? Give yourself a shot. That's what we say to people. Give yourself a shot. So when you show up, you say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. How am I going to do it? You find out. You find out the tools. You find out the skills that you need. And you either learn it or you find somebody else that has it. Yeah. Right? And then you start doing This is doing key. It. Learn it or find somebody that yeah. has it. Yeah. Don't be afraid if you don't know something. Yeah. Ask. Yeah. I, I, have, I have another good friend of mine on the speaker circuit. And he said one day, he said, here's what you need to do. You need to learn it. You need to do it. And then you need to delegate it. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is so key because you need to know how to do it in case if the other guy fails yeah. or doesn't come on Monday. Yeah, and it's it, again, it's just yeah. education. And this is so key. Jesus Christ, I never actually thought about it, but this is exactly what I've done. You know, every single aspect of my business, I know how to do it myself. So in case if somebody doesn't come, I know how to do it. Except the welding, maybe. But, <laughs> but yeah, this is so key. Could we jump into a little bit of the seminar talk? Because uh, the great speakers, Brian Tracy and all these guys, they are amazing. They've changed my life, you know. Like Brian Tracy, the, the way he talks on seminars, he actually shares what you're saying. He t tells stories. And I remember some of his stories till till now, you know, just because they were in a for format of a story, not just knowledge as if, you know. Yeah. But but how did you get to know these guys? I mean, some guy from Ireland, from Limerick, how, like how? I could even, yeah, especially back in the day, there was no Instagram. You couldn't just DM uh, Brian Tracy, you know? Uh, you know, I, I often say, I took out a mortgage and booked a flight. Because back in those days, you had to take a mortgage to book a flight. They were so expensive. And I flew. I went. And Did I you actually do that? Oh, yeah. I went and worked with these people. I invested my money. I, I, I often tell a story. I was doing stuff with, with Stephen Covey. Talking about risks. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know the seven habits, right? That's mm -hmm. why I was I done the seven habits program in Manchester many, many years ago. And, and the flight to Manchester was not a cheap flight either. Right. And... um. And I remember going over, I was going, it was a four-day program. And, uh, and the guy, there was a guy with me who was one of my business partners in a, a security training company as well. And again, the same guy I was talking about who was my, my closest confidant, he had said it to me, this was on. And I said, you know what, we'll be go, we'll go. And I think it cost me four and a half thousand pounds sterling each, which was a lot of money back then. A lot of money back then. And um, What year was <coughs> that in? 80-something? Uh, 90s. 90s, in the 90s. yeah. Four thousand pounds would right. have been a lot of money back then, I'd say. Yeah, and... Um, so I booked us in, and it was so funny. I bought the two tickets. It cost me £9,000 sterling for the tickets, right? It'd probably be about, I, I guess, 30 grand now, right? You know? And uh, so we were going to Manchester for four days. So then I went on to book the flights, and my card was declined. And I'm going, hell is going on here? I didn't have enough money in my account. I was short five, I was short five pounds to, for my flight, right? Oh, so I said, I'm going to get the money in. 
<coughs> and I get, I got, so I got money into the account and I booked my flights. But then I realised, here I'm going to Manchester for four days and I have no money in my account. How am I going to eat? Right? And now some people might have thought, and, and I still could have backed out by the way and I would have got a full refund. I, I had plenty of time to back out. But I got on a flight in Shannon Airport and I often laugh, I had a stack of ham sandwiches that last me for four days. I, pa- I brought packed lunches because that's what I was going to do. I'm committed here. You couldn't do no stuff. Right? No, but, but I knew I knew I was going to get something of value. Mm. Now, as it turns out, thankfully, you know, I, I had guys work in my office. I said, guys, we, have a, we had a lot of debtors. I said, start collecting this money and collect it fast. So we did. I mean, collected a lot of money. There was money back in my account before I even came back from Manchester. But that wasn't, it didn't matter. I was not going to miss out on this opportunity to learn. And for me, when I when I talk about learning, I wasn't just sitting there taking notes. My the opportunity for me was when I whatever I'm going to learn here is coming back into this office with me next week and we're putting it into action. That was the reality. It was ne- that was always my reality. Whatever I learn, I'm coming back and putting it into action. Then, from from a, a seminar point of view, I had been doing some work on Brian Tracy is my go-to guy and. and like, thankfully, you now he's a good friend of mine now, right? And I've seen your picture with him. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just amazing to see that, you yeah. know, because that guy's my hero, by the yeah. way. You know, he's There's a great nobody, guy. Nobody better than there in the business world, in my opinion. How many books has he written? He's now 91 world bestsellers, right? And 91. 91. But Jesus remember something, too. There is nobody, I don't know of anybody in this industry who was quoted more than Brian Tracy. Yeah. Every All, all of the big names quote Brian Tracy. Yeah. Right, yeah. and and uh, like I have his mobile, his cell number here. We have conversation, we talk on a, on oh, a, a regular right. basis, right? And I'll reach out to him, and he'll reach out to me. And you know, we've done a webinar with me during lockdown as well, where we brought a lot of good information and value to people, right? No and um, you know, he, to me, he he's he was always been my go to person. Yeah. And <clears throat> I got a phone call quite a few years back to say that Brian was coming to Dublin to launch a, a product. And launch a company. Is this happening? No, this happened oh. many years ago. Oh. And uh, and I was told that he wanted to have a European speaker and to do whatever it takes to get past Lattery to agree. Oh, really? And I said, let me think about it. <laughs> no, right? And uh, and that's how, uh, I suppose, we got in into the building that relationship with Brian. Then we, when I say we, Donna, must have Donna, we were you know, in business. We weren't even partners at the time. We were in business together. We met, of course, in this industry. And um, and so myself, Donna, and a guy called Gary McGeown, who was a business partner of ours, we were started doing seminars, and and um, and then Donna actually reached out to Mark Victor Hansen, right, <coughs> from Chicken Soup for the Soul, and told him what we're doing, and he jumped on a call with us, and he says, yeah, and he agreed to come to Ireland to speak for us, so he came, and Mark is a fascinating guy, uh, again a good personal friend now, right? We speak again regular enough, and I I done a. Just during lockdown, they have a new book called Ask, as Ask the Askers. So we done, we done a launch, and himself and his wife, Crystal, bought and come on, and we done a webinar. We're launching their book with them here to our network in Ireland. And, and by the way, watch this space, because they could be coming back to Ireland very soon, right? Um, so we build a good re- – and that's what I'm saying to people. When you come with good intention, you build relationships with good people. And if you really want to – and I say this, if you want to really become wealthy, then trade minds – with those that you want to influence and bring value to valuable people. And Mark came to Dublin to speak for us on his first trip to Dublin and he was just blown away with what we were doing and with the audience. And I can tell you, he left, what an impression this man left with our audience. And in the middle of having dinner, we, we just talked about what we're doing. He said, you guys, he said, what you're doing here is incredible. He said, There's, nobody has ever done this in Ireland before. And he said, he said if there's anything I can do to help you, and somebody said, well, do you know Bob Proctor? He said, Bob is my a great personal friend of mine. And I said, really? Well, then would you ask Bob would he come and speak? He said, yeah, of course. Right? And I think Donna asked him then. And I said, well, would you do it now? He said, yeah. So he took out his phone. Pulled his phone. <laughs> right? And put Bob on loudspeaker. And, uh, and there was, we had him and another guy called Chris Guerrero. Chris was um, an internet marketer, but he would have done a lot of the marketing for the likes of Brian Tracy, Bob Proctor, and a few other big names. And he was speaking at our seminar. And the two guys are going on, and, and Mark goes, Hey, Bob, I'm here in Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> he was, you know, and, <clears throat> you know, as crazy as they can be, right? <laughs> and he said, Bob, you've got to get here. And Chris is saying, Yeah, we're here. We're here with the organizers. These guys, are, what they're doing here is going to change this economy. And this was back in 2008, right? So, you know, when, when we were going through a tough recession at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
And Bob said, yeah. He said, uh, he introduced us on the phone and we had a conversation. He said, yeah. He said, I'll, I'll come. He said, when? And I, because we, we weren't expecting it. And I said, uh, October 11th. And I just picked that date. Thankfully, it happened to be a weekend, right? And it was, <laughs> he said, so let me check my diary. So he went on. He said, yeah, I'm available to be in Ireland on October 11th. I said, so he said, it's, it's in the diary. I said, and so he said, look, are you really committed? 100%. Can we announce? Because we had a three-day event. And this was on a Saturday evening. So I said, can we announce tomorrow that Bob Proctor's coming to Ireland? He said, 100%. It's in my diary. I've committed to you. I'm there, right? And that's how we got introduced to Bob. Mm. So then Bob came, and Bob has been, had been back with us on three other occasions, right, um, since. Where can and people find your seminar? If you, Are you still running them? Yeah, well, I mean, people people find me on look on social media. I mean, obviously, during lockdown, time, times are different. So we're coming back, right? We're doing a couple, where, and we've done a few little events. We have a, a, a Christmas networking lunch now that we're doing on December 16th, and that's, it, it's be for a charity, but it's going to be for networking. It's not going to be a seminar as such, but we're going to facilitate some things to make sure that people build really good, solid relationships on the day, and it's a good chance people will walk away with some business, mm. right? Very good chance. You know, and if you don't, you're probably going to run with your head under the table, let's say, (laughs) right? You know, but um, so so that's one thing we do. So I said to people, just follow me on social media. That's where I put it out and I promote it. That's at Facebook and Instagram. You just Google my name, you're going to find me, right? You know, I'll I'll usually come up around first. I'm easy (laughs) enough to find, you know, and uh, and just and reach out. Reach out on social media, you know, just drop a message. Tell me you met me here, right? You know, if you, if you drop a message, then we'll connect, you know. And uh, and I don't spam people. I don't bombard people with emails pushing and pushing and pushing. Either you like what we do and you get what we do or you don't. Either way, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I love your attitude. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I'm grateful, Lucas, I guess, that I'm in a place in my life where I don't need to be out there pushing hard, doing that. Um. You know, yet I, I still, I truly believe, I've yet to meet anybody in my industry that has as many clients as I do, right? Yet I don't go out harassing people for business, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful to other people who market themselves, people right? People recommend you through word of mouth. Yeah, 100%. I was re- you were recommended to me by, uh, what's his name? Oscar. Oscar yeah. yeah, Oscar. And Lipinski. then I recommended you to a few people, and this is how the, this is how this works, you know? Yeah. This is this is reflection of who you are now, you know? Because if you weren't this person, nobody would be recommending you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and this, this, goes to the, this goes to the core of what you were talking about. Keep the best out of yourself yeah. in anything that you do. Well, here's funny, because we talked about Brian Tracy. Brian gave me this advice many, many years ago. He said, Paddy said, you, you know, when people are speaking and they're talking on stage or they're doing stuff, he said, you know, the, I hear people say, give me a little taster, give me a taster and leave them wanting more. He said, that's nonsense. Give the best to your stuff for free. He said, give the best to you for free. He said, when you're talking, give the best. He said, people, two things are going to happen. People are not going to remember everything you said anyway, right? He said, but not only are you bringing value to people, he said, and at that stage, some people will go, they, you become on their radar. That doesn't mean everybody does business with you immediately. But when they feel time is right and they feel the need, then you become their go-to person. So he said, business will happen anyway, right? So give the best, give the best for free. And then when people come to work with you, they won't remember everything you discussed anyway. So then you need to get into detail. But how do you implement the things that you shared with them? And, and I, I've taken that on board. You know, people say to me, I've done, I've given so many free talks. I've done so many free seminars. I sponsor a lot of seminars and come and do a talk, right? I, you know, I, now during lockdown, we, I set up another network and we've about a thousand people in that network where we, where we ran a meeting every single day and got people connected and started doing business. And during lockdown, some of these people complete, the, one business was failing and they built something bigger as a result of the connections we made. And that's, to me, that's <coughs> what it's all about, mm. you know, and, and, um, so I mean, I'm, I'm certainly I I know for me I'm in the right place in my life right now. It's also probably uh, I can only assume because I'm, I'm not in that, that position. <coughs> but when you get messages from guys whose life you've changed through the knowledge that you've provided, it's also a good feeling, isn't it? It's everything. Yeah, I get a few of these messages from lads who watch us. You know, yeah. some guys started their own business. They say it's motivating the guys that I'm bringing mm. here. You know, and it's kind of cool. You know, but you must be on another level with that stuff. <laughs> well, well. Uh, you know, my, my number one goal, my number one goal always is to make a difference. That is it. That's my number one. That's always my first intention, that I can make a positive difference. And matter of fact, to, to say, you know, I, I, I even had a little photograph. I took it down off my social media. It's up there somewhere, but I had it as, a, as a, my cover photo, if you like. And it's simply saying that I want people to be, come up to me at some point and say, because of you, I want to inspire people enough that they come to me and say, because of you, I didn't give in. Mm. That's my goal. Mm. Right? This is not... 
I, I have no ego anymore. Mm. I'm not trying to prove Which anything to anybody. Great, greatest feeling right? in the world, you know? I just know that this is what it's all about because somebody done it for me. Mm. Right? Somebody done it for me. Multiple people done it for me over the years and that's why I'm sitting here with you today. Mm. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I live a, I believe I live a really good life and I have a very happy life right now. wasn't always that way. You but I understand it. things and I know it, you know. And all I want is for people to have the same. And there will be times, even when you see what you're doing with this podcast here, something something is going to come of this. You're going to inspire people that you will never meet. You just know that that's going to happen. And that's what you're driving for, so you to keep going. Even when you're wondering, is anybody listening, anyone paying attention? Somebody is always listening. Somebody is always paying attention. The and right you know that. Are. Absolutely. And you know that that's going to change somebody's life. And I've been blessed because of the industry I'm in that I've had people actually come to me and say to me that I've got to meet them. So I've seen it firsthand and, I be, and I'm blessed to see that. And that's a major driving force for me. And that's why I say, you see what you're doing here? Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing without looking for proof. And the proof will show up. I'm planning to do a little bit of my own uh, episodes here as well where I can share some of my stuff as well sometimes. You know, I feel, uh, feel that people need to... People, the younger generation needs a, a lot of... Uh, direction i think today you know it's it's a it's a crazy world out there you know the video games and you know people intoxicating themselves even in the, in the very young age you know it's just those guys need really a lot of direction there you know and they don't want to listen to a lot of guys you know they usually who do they listen to it's usually their local uh, drug dealer or something like that who is their idol isn't it un- un- unfortunately yeah, again it's not a parent and if it is the no. parent what is the parent you know but you know look you know most parents do the best with what they know. Yeah, I had this argument on TikTok the other day. Do you know what I said? I said that if you really and truly love your kids, you would read a minimum of one to five books about how to raise a child. Because if you don't, you're going to wing it the way your parents did. And if you're not living your life, and if you're not having a dream job, and you don't have a dream partner, the chances are that your parents didn't do a great job, you know? Oh, uh, look, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm two minds in that, right? i got to be honest. There's, there are certain elements here where I can see a parent who, who has a... Every parent has a responsibility, simple as that. Everyone has a responsibility. But you know the old saying that they say it takes a, a, a parent to, to raise a man or whatever, but it takes a, a village to raise a child kind of thing. And unfortunately, there's a lot of other influences outside of the parent's control, right? And again, we look at life as conformity. A lot of parents are out there working bloody hard to try and make ends meet. Right, so they don't have, unfortunately, because they're they're not in control of their time. Their time is determined by a clock in, clock out scenario. They have to show up to get paid. They have to clock in. So during that time, they can't be present, right? And this is why I see actually during lockdown why so many people don't want to go back to work. They've realised this. They've 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 become a walk around what what life is about, what family life is about, and how important it is. I I I personally have seen it many times, where. Parents really have good intention and want more for their kids and they work hard for the kids. And unfortunately, the community or the society that they're, they find themselves in has taken over. You know what I'm saying? But but all I can say to, to the parents, if there are any parents, is just encourage them. Keep, and keep encouraging them to be the best. Keep asking them questions. Even when they don't want to be asked questions, ask the questions. Right? Ask them about, you know, um, and like Donna, Donna has a, a, a great scenario something she got from her mum um, and she Donna has also created a beautiful gratitude journal as a result of this it's called Say Your 10 Things because every day when she would go to school and they go her mum would tell her is this a, b- a program that Donna has created is it, or yeah or it's is a book it's actually gratitude it's, it's journal book, it? yeah <coughs> and um, but she talks where about where could somebody find that book if they wanted to oh you it? can f- on donnakennedy.com right and so she has some great stuff on there really really good stuff and, and on the journal I mean, she talked about it. Her, her mum used to say to them every morning, every morning and every evening, what 10 things are you grateful for? Doesn't matter with your fingers, your toes, whatever. So when she was going out to school, she said her mum would often shout out the window, remember now to say your 10 things. So when she was on the way to school, she was thinking about the 10 things that she's grateful for. And sometimes those 10 went into 30 and 40 and 50, right? And, she's, and Donna does that still today with Ashton, right, with our son. And every night, Every night before he goes to bed, he to talk about the ten things he's been grateful for today and what he's learned. And this again, this is just preparing people. And and I gotta say, you know, I'm I'm grateful. I I have I have four sons. I have a 31 year old, a 26 year old, and a 21 year old, and they're all doing really well in their life. They've turned out to be great men. And now I can say, How I can. could they not be with that direction? <laughs> <coughs> well, you know, but you know, it's still their choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I understand. It's still their mean. choice. So we, so you know, I I I feel yes, I've had a part to play, but only a small part. 
But the one thing I will say is, you know, I will encourage them always to do whatever they want to do. Now, of course, I'm their dad. We'll have a few disputes from time to time around different things. Hmm. But the reality is, whatever they want to do, do it. Do it. There's an, I will never put an obstacle in their way. I may give them advice from time to time. They didn't, didn't have a choice whether to take it or don't. And whatever they choose, whatever they choose, I stick with them as long as it's done with good intention. And this is the same, by the way, even when I deal with, with clients and I'm working with people and I'm helping people build their business or build their life, whatever it is, I'm very consciously aware that it is their life and it is their choices. Just because I have an opinion has nothing to do with them. It's their life. And once we discover what it is that they really, truly want, then, then my job is to show them how to get there and help them get there and keep them guided and keep them on track. But ultimately, it's always going to be their choice. And this is the same when it comes to kids. Remember something here. Kids, if you allow kids to make choices without dictating at them, give them an opportunity, educate them, educate them about life. You know, if you get a chance where they can come with you to do what you do, bring them. Let them experience life. Let them experience things. And sometimes, take take them. And I miss my son bizarre because I, I believe it doesn't matter what you want to do in business. If you get good experience in life, then business becomes easier. And you start understanding where you need to be grateful for and what, what's going on in the world. If you want to change how people think and what you can do, then sometimes take them through a city somewhere and sit and talk to every homeless person. No judgment. Whether they're strung out on drugs or drunk or whatever, it doesn't matter. Do it with no judgment. And let them get that experience. And when you get that experience and you understand, well, what got them there and what could change their life, ask them what could change their lives. That's a powerful right? yeah. And then Nobody does that. Yeah, well, well, I know a good few people who do that, mm. believe it or not. Mm. And, uh, and it has opened my eyes, uh, you know, from, particularly from, from a, guy, a guy called Glenn Gannon, right? He wrote a book called From Homeless to Hollywood, right? And, um, and because he was homeless, he lived on the streets of Dublin for three and a half years and ended up in Hollywood as an actor, oh, right? Really? Because, because somebody took the time to talk to him. Somebody took the time to offer him support. And, uh, and he really opened my eyes to homelessness and what goes on. So He, he wanted to change. You know, there's a lot of, I've, I've, I've done my helping a lot. I do a lot of helping. There's one guy even mm. I took from the homeless. He, I gave him a house. I gave him a van. I gave him a job, you know. Yeah, didn't turn out too well that particular case. But yeah, helping people is very important, you know. But that happens sometimes. Mm. Yeah, right. but uh, see, the funny <coughs> thing is that people think that once you offer somebody help, you're expecting all this. But I think the moment you give somebody help, you cut yourself from the outcome. Your job is done. Mm -hmm. I mean, cut yourself from the outcome. Whatever that person does with the help is up to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Disconnect yourself from the outcome, I think. You know, that's the key. That's the key. Because if you don't do that, you're going to stop helping because you're going to say, oh, well, I did that and I did that. I mean, so what? Yeah. Keep but, doing. Well, you know what, Lucas? We, we, we talk about books and we talk about quotes and books. And, of course, there's one there that I'm sure everybody has heard many, many times. Right? You, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You mm -hmm. teach him how to fish and you feed himself for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Right? And that exactly is the same story that, that resonated with me from the science of getting rich do I help the poor by donating and feeding them yes I do but I still keep them poor if I really want to help them then I'm just going to become rich and teach them how to do the same and that's why I say to people walk your talk show up give yourself give yourself every opportunity because I can tell you you will inspire somebody else to do the same what we need right now in this world particularly today as you mentioned earlier there are younger people out there what they need is role models right now mm. Not and there is none yeah. there's very little you know mm. the, 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 what's been promoted on the internet is a complete stupidity you know if you look at the people mm. who have the thousands of followers they're usually the people who light their own farts on fire yeah. <laughs> and you look at this podcast where people can get real true value and might have a thousand subscribers but the world is upside down you, you know you know you know the old saying, when the pupil is ready, the teacher will come. Yeah, that they, is they, so true. Away. Because I tell you, I was uh, there was a time in my life where I wasn't who I am now. And, mm. you know, I remember a particular case when somebody was trying to teach me something and I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't even resonate mm. with it. it. To me, it would be just like listening to Chinese at the yeah. time. Well, you know what? And, and I want to I wanna leave you with this, right? Learn more, right, until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. Mm. And keep getting better. Mm. And once you do that, then there's nothing impossible. Mm. There's nothing that you can't achieve. And you do it at your own pace. Don't compete to anybody. Mm. Do it at your pace. Mm. That works for you. Mm. And I can guarantee you, you'll get there, whatever that is, whatever that means to you. Mm. 
You'll but you also provide one-on-one services, do you? Do you provide personal coaching? I well? do a personal coaching. Well, c- yeah. Could you tell us what services do you provide? Because we went through this yeah. great podcast. You showed the great person that you are, but you never said it. Again. Yeah. Well, if somebody wanted to use your service. If somebody it. wanted, uh, what I say, usually I tell people, you will come to my seminar, come to one of my seminars. I will give you a lot of content. You can make an informed decision then, mm-hmm. right? Whether what I do is for you or not, right? But I, I facilitate mastermind groups. So I bring people in primarily for business right but also personal so i do a lifetime goal so i want to get people focused on what their lifetime goals are and i show them how to get there and i say this everything i teach is what i do myself by yes. the way everything i teach is not what you're going to pick up in a book anywhere i can promise you i give the tools that i've used i've always used that got me to where i am and the tools that i use today so i literally want people to do as i do right so i help them and i facilitate them through a process first we get clarity on what it is they want then i get whatever shite is going on in their head and get it out of there mm. and we start replacing it with what needs to get done and Brilliant. then we strategize everything is based on strategy we put together a plan we work the plan and i work with you to get you to where you need to be at right and that's i i i've done this with tens of thousands of people now mm. okay and ultimately for me it's about getting you to move forward and showing you how to do it not just talking at you and create more frustration it's about let's get get, let's get our head down here and let's strategize here so so again yeah if people do want to reach out and they want to make change i mean that's what i'm about it's about helping people make change for the better so they have more you know could we also mention donna your wife as well what does donna do and if anybody wanted to buy her book as well well well, donna's a seven times best-selling author right and um she's a a psychologist by profession she was the youngest person in the world to qualify the level that she qualified in a lot of her studies actually have been published on American medical journals as well. So there's a lot of things about Donna that people don't know, if you like, in terms of her, her credentials. But she's she's a very real person, very down to earth person and very experienced in life. So she supports people through the process of change. And uh, and on her website, it's DonnaKennedy.com. She's got lots of stuff in there. She's got lots of really good solid material and little tips. And one of the, I mean, people often ask me, you know, what, what's the one book I want to recommend? And I can look back at some great books. And I say this not because I'm biased or anything. It, she generally, in terms of the self help books, she has written one of the best books that is on the market today, and it's called the, Co- the Confidence to Succeed. The Confidence to Succeed. Right. I'm, I'm going to have that book next. Yeah, week. and it's <laughs> it's a uh, and and the. What what's really great about this book is there are actually exercises you have to. It's not a book you can just read and put down. We are prompted to do certain things throughout the book, so you're already getting involved in the process, right? That's a great book, and uh, and again, she's lots of lots and lots of of different programs and 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 um things that are there to help people and a lot of material. So well I would done. I would send people to DonnaKennedy.com dot com to have a look at what Donna is doing too. Well done. I've heard Donna speak on one of your seminars. You know yeah. some great knowledge she also yeah. provided. And you're going to hear her again, of course. You know, <laughs> you, right. Thank you, you very much for coming, Pat. It was a pleasure to meet you. We absolutely smashed this podcast. Uh, thank you for coming and hopefully see you soon at one of your Been seminars. A pleasure. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.